Hello students, in this video we'll begin our discussion of the construction of Brownian motion. Let's let xc0, xc1, xcn be iid normal 0, 1 random variables. And define bt to be xc0 t over the square root of pi. Okay? So that's just a nice continuous function over here, t. Plus, now I'm going to add in an infinite number of terms. n goes from 1 to infinity. The square root of 2 over pi, just these are normalization factors that I need for my Foucault coefficients. Then I'm going to have the sine of n t over n. And that's just an actual de deterministic series. And I'm going to multiply that with x c to the power n. Okay, so this is going to be my definition of Brownian motion. This is defined for t between 0 and pi. Right? And then, so this is our definition. This defines, defines Brownian motion. Standard Brownian motion, okay? Because clearly if I plug in t equals 0, I'm at 0, right? Standard Brownian motion. Okay, this is actually the method that Norbert Wiener proved. This is Norbert Wiener. Construction. Well, the first, this is probably the first construction of Brownian motion, okay? Now, in order to understand this, this, of course, is a random Fourier series. So this is a random Fourier series. So we need to prove a whole bunch of different things. I need to prove this is almost surely continuous. I need to prove that the covariance of BT and B, the covariance of BT and BS is the minimum of T and S, and I need to prove that this thing is a normal is normally distributed. Not only that, it has to it has to converge, right? The convergence might be is might seem to be okay. The fact that this is like sine of n over n, like I can use Abel's test if there was no randomness here. The actual randomness is going to help me because it's going to draw me down on small events. So now. What we're going to do is we're going to analyze this, but in order to analyze this, we need to recall some basic properties of Fourier series. So let me consider f of x, f which maps negative pi to pi into r by f of x is going to be equal to 1 if x is less than t. t is a parameter now, and 0 else. Okay, and so recall that f n hat, f n hat is 1 over 2 pi, the integral from negative pi to pi of f of x, and then e to the minus i n x dx, right? And so if I consider this function over here, then what's f of 0? So f hat of 0 is 2 over pi, 1 over 2 pi. The integral, now I just integrate from t to t is less than, strictly less than pi. Integrate from negative pi to pi, so that's going to be a negative t to t, rather, negative t to t. I'm going to integrate from negative t to t now, dx, because n is equal to 0, and this is just going to be a t over pi. Okay, so the 0 mode, and what's the arbitrary n mode, f hat of n, is going to be 1 over 2 pi, and then what? And then the integral from negative t to t of e to the minus i n x dx, which if we evaluate it, is going to be e to the minus i n t and then minus e to the i n t over 2 pi i n with a negative sign. And so we see this is just going to be the sine of n t over pi n. Okay, great. And so that says that this function is, has a Fourier series, f of x is equal to what? f of x is equal to t over what? t over pi plus the sum n not equal to 0 of the sine of n t over pi n, over pi n, and then uh, e to the i n x, e to the i n x, okay? So in other words, it looks like the function we have over here in Brownian motion are very, in what we define to be Brownian motion, are very similar to each other. So this function, f of x, is going to play an important role in proving the properties of Brownian motion. So in particular, one thing we know is we know the Plancherel theorem. So let's at least get one of the properties out of the way. We know Plancherel. Plancherel's theorem says that 1 over 2 pi, 
the integral from negative pi to pi of f of x squared dx is the sum over n and z of f hat of n quantity squared, the sum of the square of the Fourier coefficients. Okay? And so in particular, if I use this Plancherel theorem, what can we conclude? On this function, what will Plancherel tell me? It will tell me, if I apply it to this function over here, well, what would the L2 nor what would the L2 norm of this thing of this function over here be square b? Well, it's just gonna get plug, plug in one between negative t and t. So this thing over here for us is gonna be just a what? Just a two is gonna be a t over pi. So t over pi is equal to what? Is equal to t over pi is equal to the zero mode squared, so t squared over pi squared, t squared over pi squared, plus the sum and not equal to zero. And that equal to zero of what? Of um, of these things squared over here. So sine squared, sine squared n t over pi squared n squared. Okay, great. Alrighty, and so now, for example, so in other words, this is an identity that we get from this function in the Plancherel theorem, okay? So that's a beautiful thing from Fourier analysis. So if I was to compute the expected value of b of t squared, using, now remember these, these xi n, assuming for a moment the convergence, which is a proven in a future video, we're just trying to get a general sense of why this might work. So let's see what happened over here. If I basically squared b of t and did the expected value, expected value of b of t squared, what do we get? Well, all the cross terms that we're going to get, like xc0 with xc3 are going to zero out by the, because they're not correlated, they're identically distributed. So we're going to get a what? We'll get this thing over here, and the expected value of xc0 squared, is, and the expected value of any of these things squared is going to be equal to 1, right? So this is going to be equal to what? It's going to be equal to t squared over pi, t squared over pi, plus the sum, n goes from 1 to infinity, the sum, n goes from 1 to infinity, of what? Of just these things squared, so I'll have a 2 over pi, and then all the sine squared, sine squared of nt over n squared, and then times 1, because that's the expected value of xcn squared, right? Oh, but now what can we do? We can observe over here that if I look at this formula over here and cancel out one of the pi's, like so, that would cancel and that would cancel, and then use the symmetrization, this identity becomes what? So this identity over here is going to become t is equal to t squared over pi plus, now of course, this is a perfectly symmetric function over the negatives and positives, over when n is positive and n is negative, those are going to be the same value, so I get two of these things, so plus two, the sum n goes from one to infinity of sine squared, sine squared n t over uh, one pi n squared, right? And so, lo and behold, look what we have over here. We have t squared over pi, and then the sum from 1 to infinity of 2 over pi, sine squared of nt over n squared. And so, this expression over here and this expression are equal. Therefore, the expected value of b of t squared is equal to t. So, this thing has the right variance, right? Furthermore, since I'm adding up a number of, if I, I know for a fact that if I add up a finite number of normal random variables, the resulting sum will be still be a normal random variable variable with the correct variance, right? So, and we have to prove that this thing converges, but now we have a good sense that if there's a convergence, I know the variance has the right form. Next, we'll show, so in other words, this is, we need to prove that it's Gaussian. This will allow us to compute the fact that the covariance of this process is exactly the minimum of S and T, and that will, along with the fact that then finally we'll use um, some tools from harmonic analysis to prove that this is almost surely continuous in further videos. Thank you very much.